In this video we're going to talk about the range of mathematical values that a probability can take, and how we interpret probabilities at the extremes and between the extremes. We also talk about how the language of necessity and contingency relates to all this. We commonly talk about probabilities in terms of percentages, but it's easy to forget that a percentage is just a fraction. 50% probability is 50 over 100, or 1 half. 25% is 25 over 100, or 1 quarter. So the first convention we adopt when talking about probabilities is that probabilities are real numbers that can take on any value between 0 and 1. Now the extremes are interesting. What do we mean when we say that the probability of an event or a proposition is 0 or 1? Well, if the probability is 1, in the event language that means the event is certain to occur. There is no chance that it won't occur. In the proposition language, it means that the proposition must be true, it cannot be false. Now this is just a convention, it doesn't say anything about when we can judge an event or proposition to have probability 1, but there are some obvious examples. If we grant that the only two options in a coin toss are to land heads or to land tails, then it's safe to say that the probability of the coin landing heads or tails is 1, since these exhaust all the possibilities. And this is one common way that this concept is used in probability theory and statistics. Given a set of mutually exclusive and exhaustive possibilities, the probability that one of these possibilities will be realized is equal to 1. Now a probability equal to 0 means just the opposite. This refers to an event that can't possibly occur, or a proposition that can't possibly be true. In mathematics and logic, there's a convention that contradictory statements can't be true. So contradictions are automatically assigned a probability value of 0. If a coin landing heads means that it didn't land tails, and vice versa, then it's a contradiction to say that the coin landed both heads and tails at the same time. That's a contradiction, and can't possibly be true, so we assign it probability 0. Now in philosophy we have a pair of concepts that we often use to distinguish events or propositions at the extremes from those that aren't at the extremes. If a proposition or event has probability 1, that means it must be true, or it must occur and we say that the proposition is necessarily true, or that it's a necessary event. Similarly, if it has probability 0, that means it must be false, it can't possibly occur, and we say that it refers to a necessarily false proposition, or that the event is an impossible event. Now if a proposition or an event has probability that is not 0 or 1, but lies between 0 and 1, that means it's possible that the proposition is true, or that the event will occur. When this is the case, we commonly say that the proposition is a contingent proposition, rather than a necessary proposition. Similarly, we'd say that it's a contingent event, rather than a necessary event. In this context, contingent just means possible. It's possible that the event will occur. If it occurs, it occurs. But we understand that it could have happened otherwise, and that's what we mean when we say it's contingent, rather than necessary. Now having just said this, I think it's important to point out that these concepts of necessary and contingent propositions and events are not part of formal probability theory. They're really a part of a broader philosophical framework for interpreting the world, and they're separable in principle from probability theory. A philosopher might argue, for example, that there is no principled way of distinguishing necessary propositions from contingent propositions, or might dispute the existence of necessary truths in a given domain. But these philosophical debates are largely independent of the conventions we use in probability theory and statistics. I just wanted to make this point clear. The distinction between necessarily and contingently true propositions or events is an important one in philosophy, and probability theory can help us articulate what we mean by these concepts. But within probability theory, probability 1 or probability 0 has an independent formal meaning and formal justification. It's part of the definition of what a probability is as a mathematical concept. And this definition is independent of any philosophical uses we might want to make of these concepts.